G'day guys, uh, welcome to this weekend's video. It's gonna be a real short one. It'll be just a quick follow-up review of the Azito 36 volt chainsaw that Azito sent out to me back around the Christmas time. So it's been around about four months. Uh, I've taken it out camping, I've used it lots and lots around the yard, and the most recently, as of just yesterday, uh, I had the opportunity to take it over to a friend's place. He's got quite a few big stumps I wanted to get rid of, and we just wanted to chop those up a little bit smaller so they're in a manageable size. We haven't quite got there yet. It's gonna be another weekend's worth of work. I've got a good chance to put the Azita through its paces again and really you know, lean into it on some big timber. And what I actually found was, rather than pairing it up against the Echo, uh, which obviously happens in any case, they make a really nice pair of saws uh, if you've got to tackle something like this. If I was doing vertical cuts and the like, uh, the petrol chainsaw was really good for just getting in there and just grinding it out. Uh, just constant power. If I wanted to just go and trim around the outside, uh, the electric, the 36 volt Azito was great for that. The other thing that was really good from the Azito perspective was I had no issues working on its side or even turning it upside down and having to cut upside down. Uh, because there's no fuel, there's no carburetor, you can pretty much work this thing on any angle you want, any angle you can get into yourself, uh, and it works really well. People are going to ask about the battery life. I was a little bit surprised that the batteries didn't last quite as long as I expected. Up until yesterday of cutting the, the tree stumps that we were doing for Eddie, I hadn't actually ran out a set of batteries. I'd used it lots around the yard, um, you know, four or five inch type stuff. Uh, Steve and I had used it to go camping. I'd used it over a couple of days. Again, relatively small stuff. You'll see just here, uh, <laughs> we did take down one sort of prize bit of timber that we took uh, back to camp for camp wood. Uh, and that was excellent, that was a big heavy piece of solid timber and that worked through that as well. So I got a few days out of that, uh, but we were probably only cutting up maybe 10 to 15 minutes at a time. So realistically probably only half hour, maybe 40 minutes over that. Pushing this into service uh, on this big timber, it was hard work, the way I was cutting it, it was getting a bit of pinch as well, so it was really having to, to push to turn. I probably got around about the 45 minutes to maybe an hour out of it. But I really shouldn't be surprised being that it was such a hard job that we we're asking of it. Now I was over at Ed's place for about six hours, I suppose, on all the saws. And we had to take down three stumps, three really big stumps, as much as we could. There's still a little bit of work to do on one, just to get them to a manageable size. So we can actually list them onto a ute or something like that. One thing I preferred about the little Echo was the over-under mechanism for the safety. And now that really fits your natural grip style, so if I was holding on to that and turning that at different angles, it didn't matter because basically all I was doing was holding onto the handle and the chainsaw would just keep going. Now for a while there, what I normally do is hold my thumb on that safety trigger and then obviously pull the trigger to activate the chainsaw. I was thinking that I had to hold on to that like that the whole time and that was a bit of annoyance, especially if you're trying to work with the chainsaw on its side or or a certain different angle, it does get a little bit difficult, <laughs> as you can see, to try and keep your thumb on that, and you get a bit of a bit of a wear spot. Um, but what I've actually found is, that just locks the trigger from actually going in. Uh, so what you do is just push that in, pull the trigger in, and then you can let go of that little uh, safety lock or safety mechanism there. But to be honest, I still prefer the over-under. It's just, it's just more natural than having to push that in with your thumb. Other than that, uh, the little bar's holding up well. Uh, the chain is holding up well. So I did put a new chain on the Echo when we did our review in the past. Uh, now both of these are gonna need some decent sharpening because that timber we were working through yesterday uh, was you know, pretty solid stuff and we did lots and lots of work. Now I know everybody wants to know, you know as far as the batteries go, how far will they go versus the gas against the tank of fuel? We'd probably say Somewhere between a tank and a half and possibly two tanks was what I got out of this. Uh, possibly a little bit less. I think what I'm saying is if you have the option of having both saws, uh, that's an ideal situation. You can use your petrol saw for all the hard yak at just go, go, go. Uh, the electric saw with the finessing stuff and trying to get into harder places where I needed to turn the saw upside down on its side, anything like that. But the petrol saw didn't particularly like. It was okay, but it just ran a little bit rougher. One thing I noticed though, when the day had finished and I'd gone and packed everything in the car, went in, said hooray, and then come back out and jumped in the car, this was all I could smell in the car. And that kind of reminded me that I'd been taking my chainsaw camping and all that sort of stuff, and I'd forgotten what it was like 
to have the smell of petrol in the car. I've got to tell you, the memories come flooding back and I didn't like it at all. Now what I do recommend, uh, and I did go and grab out of my own dinero, uh, was the double fast battery charger uh, for the Azito. I think this was around about the $50, $60. I'll put up on the screen there somewhere so you can see what that is. Uh, but that charges both of your batteries uh, in around about an hour, I think. Um, so realistically, I could have gone and you know gone and grabbed some lunch or something like that. Uh, chuck the chainsaw and then been back on the job in about an hour. But being that I went through over six tanks of fuel uh, in the little Echo, I would have needed a second set of batteries to be on charge while I was out working. Possibly if I had a second set of batteries on charge, I could have continuously went and got those, dropped them off, changed them over for another set, put the clean set in and been away and probably worked continuously. These are around about $100 mark again on the screen there somewhere so effectively about for $400 worth of batteries if you wanted to do that and I got lucky here because Azito sent these out to me uh, for free with with the chainsaw for the review uh, so they didn't cost me anything but uh, but 100 bucks each if you wanted a set of four it's about 400 bucks so uh, but yeah definitely recommend the two bay charger it makes life so much easier what I do when I'm camping is I'll take the little 350 watt inverter again the Dometic review up there and I plug this in over the back of the car while I'm traveling that gets plugged in via 240 and both of my batteries are, are on charge and ready to go when I pull up at camp. I want to chop down some firewood if we're on a trail and we need to take get a tree or something like that. Uh, normally when I'm at home that sits up on the wall in the garage. I've just put a little piece of timber up there. That sits up there and the batteries basically just live in that uh, until I need them. Then I go and pull them out and away we go. I do blow all my chainsaws out when I get them home after I've been using them so it does look relatively clean but you'll see there's no damage to this body uh, this was getting moved around again it's just a hard plastic uh, but this is surviving really well the lock mechanism is uh, holding up strong not having any issues I haven't had an ever so slight leak uh, from the bar oil uh, coming out the bottom there uh, but I tend to get that with my echo as well if I top them up and then travel in the car uh, I tend to get an ever so slight leak uh, wherever they're sitting so I tend to leave those fairly low on bar oil and then just top them up uh, as I need them rather than carrying them full of bar oil. Now if I have to pick one saw, it's going to depend on the job ultimately. If I need to do the hard yakka and it's going to be a whole day's worth of work, the Echo is going with me. It's easy to top up, it's easy to refuel, it's just go, go, go. It's a workhorse basically until you start having issues like a still, like Steve still uh, from the review. Providing you get it started, you're all good. This is where the electrics are bound to have the advantage. Now if I needed a little bit of yard work or something like that, something nice and easy, prune some trees down, uh, just general running around the backyard, this is what I'm grabbing. I go in, I get my batteries. One. And we're working. It's that easy. It really is, from a convenience perspective, uh, the Azito has still got it all over the Echo. If I'm going traveling in the car and I'm going camping and I don't want to carry fuel, which I don't want to do, <coughs> the Azito is going with me. Uh, this is going into the back of the car. If you're doing some trails and you need to take a tree down, then the Azito is still a really good choice. And that's my choice for those type of duties. Given the option of going to do some yard work, I'm taking both. It's just the ability to avoid compromise. It's a good combination to have, uh, certainly for around the yard. Okay guys, thanks very much for stopping by. Um, that's all we've got for you today. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.